So, Paul, you read my tale of woe last week, I take it. Indeed. I was wondering if we were ever going to see you on the site again. Um, I'm happy to report that everything's back to normal. I mean, there's nothing broken anymore, knock wood. So, I don't... It was weird. Um, so, just in case somebody's hearing this podcast and didn't read the site last week, uh, I got a Windows update that ran for seven hours. And I eventually just rebooted the machine manually because the, the, the update wasn't going anywhere. And when I came out of that funk, my input devices, especially my keyboard, were just absolutely malfunctioning, like locking up for seconds at a time. The rest of the machine was fine. Like if I was watching a video, you wouldn't notice it. But the keyboard itself would just like lock. If I was holding down one particular key, it would repeat that key, you know, a dozen or so times during its little lockup fit, which made typing really hard and really annoying and i got it's all like that like a hal 9000 error <laughs> oh, it's so bad um yeah so now i have crawled my way back to where i was so i also um, applied a bunch of those windows updates and didn't have any problems so i don't know a, a lot of people are reporting like i never have problems it's like yeah but if you have problems they're they're not fun right that's the other thing i wanted to get into a lot of people suggested hey you know you should unplug your usb drives or your usb devices and i'm like well i have a lot of usb devices so i never knew that was a problem so this might be a contributing factor as i've always had tons and tons of usb devices on my machine and maybe that's why so many of my updates go haywire. Um, just not you know, that that's an excuse for Microsoft. Right. Like, there's no reason why having serial devices plugged into your PC should affect in any way the updates process. Right. That's insane. Especially after all these years. Like, didn't this make it to the top of the list ever? <laughs> uh, yeah, for the complete inventory, I don't even know if I can do the, you know, mouse, keyboard, the microphone I'm talking into now, my Xbox controller, m two external drives, a, oh, what is that thing? I can see the plug from here, but I can't remember, I, the, the cord goes below my desk and I forget what it plugs into. Anyway, it, the... The machine itself that I have has several USB ports. They're all full, and one of them leads into a hub, and that's full, and it plugs into another hub, which is also full. <laughs> no. It's a lot. I do a lot of stuff. Oh, I've got, like, um, some of these po ports, you know, come on and on. Like, uh, one of them is just a charger for my phone and tablet you know just like oh here's a free plug i'll just plug in here and my computer's like oh boy an external device do you want to read it do you want to look at it i'm like sure i'd like to see it and it's like it opens up an empty window there's nothing <laughs> on this device you can neither read it nor write to it and it doesn't exist i'm like well thanks yeah. for <laughs> thanks for offering the option to do nothing <laughs> you'd think that android devices would be humble enough to be like Clearly, someone has access to my hardware. I'm just going to comply. But no, they're like, no, you can't have any of my secrets. The user clearly doesn't want you to have access to any of this. Yeah, my tablet has music on it. And I know I put that music on the device by plugging it into my old computer and just downloading the, you know, onto my tablet. We were going on a road trip, so yeah. I wanted a whole bunch of music to listen to. So I downloaded like four hours of, of music and now I plug it in later and Windows is like, I can't talk to this machine. I'm like, you put the files on there yourself. Why can't you talk to it now? That's so stupid. <laughs> anyway, so the There's advice... There's a security update. <laughs> right. 
<laughs> Secure the device um, to protect it against instances where it might behave properly and the way the user wants. You are now saved yeah. from the functionality you're trying to use. So to, to, to wrap this up, thank you for those of you who advised unplugging USB devices. It's annoying to do so. It's like putting up Christmas lights, get, get everything unplugged and then plug it all back in where it belongs and make sure it's all working. But if that saves my computer from bricking itself... That's a, it's less, okay, as annoying as that is, it's less annoying than seven hours of doing nothing. I can't believe seven hours, it's just insane. Right, and I think somebody said it got stuck. The black screen is only supposed to be there for a moment. So actually all seven of those hours were it waiting for something that was never, ever going to happen. Like, how could, how do you let that happen? Didn't anybody ever ever think well what if this you know doesn't go away shouldn't we we've got a process that depends on some external device what if that device is broken or malfunctioning or there's just some breaking communications or it's it needs to be updated do we want to lock the user um into this cursed state like come on that's programming 101 what if this goes on too long you know, put a sanity check in there. Someone was reading Neuromancer when they wrote that update process. I forgot that part of Neuromancer. It's the black ice and it's just like extends into eternity. All right. Anyway, everything's fine again. I'm back to normal. Everything's fine here. We're all fine. How are you? I played Into the Breach. Last week, uh, on Sunday, actually, right after we recorded the, the diecast. And as I mentioned in the comments, it's fine. It's I enjoyed it. Um, I didn't play it very long. Uh, maybe like six hours or something. And uh, I haven't beat it. But I played several times, and, and it's good. But I don't feel like playing it again. Oh, what is that? I just, it, it was like, okay, I see what's happening here. I understand it. Uh, I'm not going to become a world expert at it, and I guess I'm done. Interesting. I've had games like that, too, where you can't point to anything and say, this is why I don't like it. You're just, eh, I don't, I don't want to play. And... It's it's a that's a frustrating thing if you're a critic because <laughs> it's sort of your job to explain why you're not into it, <laughs> right? Like Roger Ebert um, comes goes to a movie and he's like, yeah, I didn't like it. I don't know why. <laughs> just not feeling it stars. today. Yeah, I'm just in fact, I didn't want to even want to be at the cinema. Honestly, I wanted to be home playing video games. <laughs> <laughs> then he goes home and he's like, wait, these aren't fun either. No. <laughs> these aren't even art. <laughs> so what what have you been having fun with this week, other than waiting for a computer to update? Okay, I mentioned this programming project I'm on, and I don't want to spoil too much of it because I just started writing about it last week. And, you know, we haven't even finished the the throat clearing at the beginning of the project, you know, yeah. to get... Uh, but to spoil ahead a little bit, at some point in the project, I needed to start adding external 3D models. I, to I told you one of the goals of the project was to lay out furniture in a way that makes sense. Right. I don't want to have a, f a furniture layout that's made by a human, and then you'll be like, oh, here's here's that layout again and it'll get very boring so i wanted layouts yeah an inflexible instance of furniture you wanted it to be dynamic in some way right so i was working on that system and my first brilliant plan was you know i'll just i don't want to make models or download models. i'll just use cubes and the big cube will be you know an an you know, the little cube will be a nightstand and the long cube will be a couch or something. And the sort of medium-sized cube will be, I don't know, a television, whatever. 
it, it's just, it looks like a room full of crates. It looks like a UPS shipping center. Right, Amazon clearinghouse. You, you can't honestly tell if the system is working or if it would be interesting with real art. And the only way to figure that out was to make some art. And so I, I made a few models and I kind of, you know, th this was me getting to know Blender 2.8. And I really got over the initial learner's hump and I started having a really good time. In fact, I was having such a good time that my programming kind of stopped. <laughs> and I'm just making <laughs> piles of models. Oh, I'm so happy. It's good stuff. Yeah, it's fun. It's it's like a game. It is. It, it like I was like, hey, it's you know, I could play some games right now, but I'd rather be doing Blender. Uh, according to this, I've made wait, that's doubled. So half of the uh, about sixty-two models. That's how many I've made. Wow. Yeah. And the other thing is, this is such a good, I mean, this is nostalgic for me, because I used to, this was my career in the late 90s. And mm, right. I, I was glad to leave it, because I'd rather be programming, but now I come back to this sort of thing, and I'm doing low-poly programming, just like in the 90s. Like, I don't think I'd enjoy you know, sculpting high poly objects. At that point, you need to be like a sculptor. There's something, it's the difference between illustration and making pixel art. Like these are very different activities. Um, they certainly they certainly have some degree of overlap, but there's a lot different between them. Yeah, it's the same for me. I've always felt like this high poly sculpting stuff was wasteful like i had this this insane conservatism toward polygons where it's like right? oh, i can't yeah. use too many polygons because that would be unfair to all the other polygons in the scene or something right. it's just like no that makes no sense but like that's how i feel about it and i it hasn't changed for years it's always been like how many how many polygons can i make this thing in minimum as opposed to how many polygons can I lavish this with? Right, because you can always do more with more. And so there's a certain satisfaction to like making something that seems really intricate in the fewest number of polygons. Yeah. So it's damaged pro progress on the project, but boy, is it fun. And, and now I'm just filling up this non-game with just endless amounts of content. <laughs> like, so, so you started programming so you wouldn't have to create content, and then you realized that creating content was the fun part of the project. Right, right. It's also time-consuming. Um, I'm not very good at Blender yet. I mean, I know how to do all the things, but I still get tripped up on shortcuts, and I'll hit a shortcut and it does something insane. Like... Oh, what was that? It, I hit the button and nothing seemed. Th this is the this is the most terrifying Blender mistake. I hit a button expecting some operation to happen. Nothing happens. I'm like, what? What did I do wrong there? Oh, I need to be in object mode to use that. Key. Okay, uh, flip back over to object mode. What I don't know is that that key has a different purpose in edit mode in object mode. So what you end up with is like, you know, I thought, oh, nothing happened. But no, that button did something. I just, it wasn't just immediately uh, visible. It merged a couple of, or it, one I had recently was, uh, it broke a face off the rest of the model. Like, just separated you hit it. Why? So yes, I did. I think, <laughs> I, yeah, I did. I hit Y, and I was either aiming for another key or I meant to move along the Y. I forget what I was trying to do, but I, I had a key press that didn't do what I expected. I was like, oh, whatever, I'll, you know, try and do something else. But yeah, I'd torn one of the polygons off the model, and it was just positioned there where it belonged, but no longer attached. 
and I started having all these weird problems. You know, you're trying to merge a couple of vertices, and it's like, you can't do that. <laughs> you know, stuff like that. Or yeah. you, you try it, and it makes no sense. I, ha I sometimes have problems where, okay, I've got this edge between these two polygons, and I go to move the edge, and it just opens a hole in the model, and I realize, oh, there's a <laughs> gap here. That, yeah. Oh. Uh, yeah, so I have a lot of problems like that. To it's fix that really specific fun. thing, you hit F3 and type merge, and it brings up merge by distance. You just hit enter, and it'll combine all the vertices that are on top of each other. Nice. Okay, important. It used tip. to be Thanks like a going. shortcut for that, but yeah. F3 is the, the search button, so you just type that and then I type in what you want. And if you get 2.9, they've got a, um, what is it, like a uh, a fuzzy search, I think. So you don't even have to type in the right thing, or you can search for, like, and you can type text, Marge or if you and mistype it'll... it or whatever. Yeah, exactly. You can type Marge, and it still finds it. Right. I, I appreciate that advice, but I'm not updating anything again. <laughs> <laughs> You're done updating forever. Yeah, this is my computer from now until, uh, in, you know, until maybe, maybe around the end of the century, if I live that long, I'll, I'll look about, look into getting a service <laughs> pack or something, but... No, it all works right now. And I'm Good. having a great time. No, I'm glad to hear it. That's that's awesome. All right. Paul, you are banished. No, wait. It just says banished here. What's this going? What's this about? What is this tomfoolery? Uh so banished is a is like a city builder. It's a medieval city builder game. It came out in twenty fifteen, I think. And it just went on sale on GOG and I had it on my wish list and I was like, sure, for like six bucks and seventy four cents or whatever. I'll, I'll pick up a copy. I'd like to play it. So I played it this I week. Have, I, I remember somebody... I was had this thing like in my cart when I read a note from some, a comment on my site, somebody talking about Banish. And I can't remember who... I, I think it was Krellen, but I'm, I might be wrong there. But I remember somebody telling the story where... They had one of their citizens starve to death while delivering food. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The, Carrying the, food. The priority system is a, a little bit weird. Yeah. So I actually had that problem in a different instance. Uh, I had... I started running out of tools and in this game your all your guys have the same efficiency and then if they're educated they get a higher efficiency and then they get higher efficiency based on the tools they have so they can have no tools which is just basic you know working with their hands or whatever and then iron tools and steel tools so when their tools run out of durability they go back to having no tools and they have to go pick up another one and uh that is a problem if you are out of tools because then your guys start running out of tools and then everything becomes less efficient and then it becomes harder and harder to make more tools because all your guys don't have tools to work with. <laughs> so they're just trying to build a hoe with their bare hands? Well, that's actually, yeah, that's actually what happened because um, the guys in the blacksmith are working on making tools and so they go and they make the tools and then they pick up the tools and then they carry them to the uh, the warehouse and they drop them off and then they go back to make more tools because they're in like working mode but if they don't have a tool themselves they don't just like grab it off the forge and be like good this one's mine they're like okay I'm delivering these to the warehouse and I still don't have a tool and I'm gonna go back and like forge some more stuff with my fists <laughs> I mean just like punching these red hot iron ingots I guess. <laughs> you guys are out there punching trees like they're playing Minecraft. Yeah, yeah. Well, and down in the mines, that was the worst part because all the miners that were like deep underground <laughs> didn't have any tools. And so I had, to, I had like twice as many guys in the mines than I needed because they were so inefficient because none of them would pick up the tools that they needed because they were all underground and they couldn't get to the tools. And all the like, you know, farmers and stuff were picking them up before they could get them. That is hilarious. Barehanded mining. Like, there should be some sort of, like, okay, you don't mine barehanded. You just lose the ability, go yeah. do something else. 
Right, right. Like, well, but but then if you run out of tools completely, like you, you would be game over. So I appreciate that they allow you to keep going. It's a very forgiving game. Uh, you very. It's difficult to starve to death. Uh, you don't need tools to build stuff. No one has any skills or whatever that, with any thresholds. Everyone can do everything. Um, it's it's very simplified. It's like it's like Dwarf Fortress, but with nothing underground, and it's all very simplified. Um, have you played Nomoria? G N O M O R I A. I I remember it only because of the pun in the name. <laughs> yeah. It's, it feels kind of like that, except Nomori, I feel like, didn't go... It, it had a weird middle ground where it was imitating some stuff from Dwarf Fortress that didn't need to be imitated and cutting some stuff out that was kind of necessary. Uh, and Banished is, like, even more so, but also nothing underground. So it it has a nice feel. It, it feels solid throughout the experience. Um, there are a lot of controls that I'd like to have that you don't have like you can't control what goes into stockpiles or into storage and you can't set any you can't fiddle with stuff but it right. also makes it nice because like well i can't fiddle with it so i'm just gonna play the game just let it run instead of fiddling with things all the time and so it it keeps the experience going instead of getting bogged down in all these details and all the tiny little levers and switches you can flip hmm. i did experience one a crash where uh, if you have it using an audio device and then you unplug that audio device, the game will just hard hang. And if you have it in full screen Oops. mode, it won't release the display. So you can't even like you can you can control delete and bring up that menu. But once you bring up the task manager, like the task manager is hidden behind the banished screen. It's it is banished, it banishes everything else. So that's not good. Um, and then uh, when I was when I was ordering it, monitor hmm? set up. I do you have dual monitor on that computer? I don't think I had it plugged in at the time. I've got a, a monitor on the uh, desk, and then I have a projector for like the whole family room. Um, but I'm not sure if it was plugged in or not. Okay, well, this doesn't excuse Windows has always had a problem with this. It's like it never occurred to anybody. What happens if the thing that just crashed is full screen? Well, I guess the user is just trapped forever. <laughs> like, just didn't right. occur to anybody that that might happen. Uh, the way I work around, because that happens sometimes, and it is shift arrow key. We'll send it, you know, in the direction you want to go. If, if your extra monitor is on the right, you do shift windows right. And that'll move task manager over to that window where you can actually get to it. It does not help you ah. if you're on a laptop with only one monitor. Because that's a frustrating thing is... Task Manager has the focus. You could solve this problem right now, but Task Manager refuses to be visible. It won't like, oh, oh you're in full screen, but hey, I'm Task Manager. I, I need to be in front. Like, that's one of the few times I'd be okay with Microsoft being a little pushy with their software. The one time you should assert yourself over something I'm doing and you don't. Every other time, I want you to leave me alone and leave me to my work, and and you're like, nope, you're done. You're updating now, or you've got to do this, or I've got some notification There's some toaster pop-ups that you need. Right. I, I'm going to spam you to death with reminders for boring tasks and break your workflow and distract you. But no, this one time when you've got a locked application, it's like, oh, I don't want to jump to the front. I'll just leave you trapped forever. You can just sit there and do nothing. Uh, it wasn't a problem with multiple monitors because I tried it on a PC that has just one monitor hooked up and uh, it's a different setup and that also hung the process, but I had it in a window. So uh, the the little sub window saying, it looks like this process has stopped working. Do you want to close it? Was able to display properly and, and kill it. Nice. Also barely related, but I noticed that if you're paying uh, via PayPal, to GOG and you say that you forgot your password uh, inside the little payment window, it'll it'll bring up a little screen saying that your browser is up. And like, like this is not a supported browser or something. And like, upgrade your browser, you goof. And it's like, I, it's not my browser. This is this is GOG, man. I, I don't have any control over this. <laughs> oh, the practice of making your app a web page is just like all the all the gaming stores do it, and it's so awful. 
<sighs> I, 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 I mean, like to think of it as just charmingly naive. Right. I can't believe they all do it. And they're all like really horrible um, in terms of responsiveness. Like Google Docs runs over the web and it, but it, has some client stuff. It, it does a lot of the processing client side and then just sends updates to the server as it needs to. So if I yeah. lag out and my, you know, even if my internet goes down for five seconds and instead of locking me in this horrible, you know, mid sentence, all of a sudden it stops taking in input, it just allows me to keep typing. No problem. We'll catch up when the internet comes back. And usually I won't even know it happened. I'll be typing away in some other program that's not even, you know, relevant to me right now will pop up some pin. Oh my gosh, the internet's gone. The world's ending. Quick, help me, user. And meanwhile, Google's like, you want to keep typing? I'll handle it. No problem. Yeah, there's a little tiny line up at the top. It's like offline mode or whatever. Yeah. And at least do that. At least do something like that. Yeah, no, I, I don't know why know. it's so unresponsive. Because like, there's a bunch of stuff that's local, like and you couldn't right. you could just bring that up quickly. Like it happened to me the other day with the Epic Game Store, where it, it popped. I started my computer, and Epic automatically launches because I haven't disabled it yet. Because I'm I'm naive like that too, I guess. And it pops up like three toaster notifications, being like, "There's all these free games." I'm like, "I don't want any of these games. Go away, Epic." And so I start clicking on little X, and it's a tiny little X, and I misclick one of them, and it brings it. It's like, oh, you want to play this game? Perfect. Here, we're bringing you up the Epic Game Store window. And so it instantly, bam, pops up the Epic Game Store, but it's like a blank black window because yes. it's a web browser, and it, like, it doesn't know anything about anything. It's like, oh, I wasn't prepared. Like I told you this was a free, but now I have no idea what I'm doing. And so I sat there for a couple seconds, and I'm like, no, I'm killing the process, and I'm going back to what I was doing. Epic, you're wasting my time. But it seems like if you wanted to give the user an opportunity to engage with your platform and you bring up a notification, you should have something ready to go. You shouldn't sit yeah. there waiting for someone to interact with you before you start loading stuff. Like, maybe they're saving system resources? Maybe? But it's just goofy. Yeah. Yeah, it is goofy. I think at the bare minimum, Steam should have a page for your games that you have installed those should all be cached. That's not that big compared to the size of the game. And that way you could, you know, page through your your library instantly, even if the internet's all wonky or not responsive or whatever. Right, yeah, just put it in the install file. It's like, what, maybe 10 JPEGs or something, or PNGs if you want them to be lossless. And, right. like, and some text. No problem. It compared to, like, a, a gigabyte install, just... I'll plop it in there. Right, right. At least do that. I understand the front page is going to be... You can't store that. <laughs> it's The whole point of the store page is to get right, things right. dynamically. Uh, but even that, like, I I swear, you can go on into Chrome and browse through the Steam site faster than you could do it through Steam's own browser. <laughs> Right? It's purpose-built just to display Steam. Why is it so slow? The one that just makes me insane is when I've got a file on my Android phone and I want to bring... It's an HTML file. It's entirely local. I bring it up on my Android phone and it pops right up, you know, whatever. And that's fine. But, like, I leave it open and a couple days later uh, I come back and I want to open that file again. I've got, a you know, a bunch of books and stuff in, loaded right. into my phone. So I want to go back to that thing, and it's like, oh, this isn't available. You have to refresh it and, like, re rejuvenate the source file or whatever. It, like, you know, gives me this weird error page. And I was like, this is entirely, this is a local file. It hasn't, up you know that it hasn't updated. You would have complete <laughs> access to this. There's no way that it could have changed without you knowing. It's, why are you doing this to me? It's so bad. All right, I, th I think we better stop talking and do some mailbags because this is getting, it's going off the hook. Okay, first email, dear Diecast. I hope you're doing well in using, why can't I talk tonight? Why do I host a podcast if I can't talk? I'm the one who had the glass it's... of wine. It, it, I don't know what you did. I had tea. 
it doesn't normally make you a stumble mouth. You know what? You're still not Speaking drinking of coffee, which, though. No, but this leads into the... I'm, I'm going to skip that one because I can't talk. I'll, I'll let you do that one. I'm going to take this next one because it is short and directly relevant <laughs> to what's going on right now. Hello, Diecastians. I was listening to Diecast number 312 in podcast form, and you said about a game that wasn't fantasy, fantasy Star Online 2. It was clear that they didn't... This is a quote of me. It was clear that they didn't spend a lot of money making this... And then the person can't tell if I said awful with an O, meaning, you know, waste, or awful, meaning terrible. So, which was it? Fugu. Thank you for the question. Um, uh, for the... For the record, I awful just isn't one of those words I reach for. I would normally just in that situation I would just say shit. So I am ninety nine percent sure I said awful. I'm not sure why you're that curious about what I said. It's possible I said awful but meant awful. That's that's also a possibility. Well, awful is a a correct pronunciation of the word that you are pronouncing awful. Uh, they're, they're homophones in some dialects. Are they? I did not know that. I don't think I've ever yeah. heard anybody say awful out loud. I've just read it because it's it's somewhat archaic word. Yeah, like, it's not a, a, it's not one of the ten hundred most common words. It definitely isn't. I mean, yeah, I've never I don't recall ever hearing it said. I don't know why I've heard it said, and I'd like to move on now. All right, fair enough. <laughs> uh, let's let's back up to Lino's question. Go for it. Dear Diecast, hope you're doing well. In recent years, I can't think of a single AAA game that has a custom mouse cursor for the menus, i.e. the main menu and the inventory screen. They pour all these millions into making these games, yet they can't spare the short time it would take to make a custom mouse cursor. What gives? One of my favorite features in old games was the custom mouse cursors they had, the lightsaber in Jedi Knights games, the different hands in Warcraft based on the race you were playing. I even remembered a mediocre Diablo clone where your cursor was a fairy who was an actual character. She talked to you and even served as your light source in dungeons. Keep being awesome, Lino. I remember those Thanks days for the question, too. Lino. Yeah, I remember those yeah, days yeah. too. That was really a late 80, late 90s thing. Well, I think um, The Witness has a custom cursor, doesn't it? Does it? I don't remember. I remember, you know, right about the turn of the millennium, that stopped happening, except PopCap did it for a while. But theirs would be just a bigger, cartoonier pointer. You know, it was still, you know, the arrow, the arrowhead we're all right. used to now. But it was, you know, a big, shiny, friendly, you know, looks like a big piece of plastic that you could bonk somebody on the head with. Sure. I I have to think it's a usability thing, because when it's... Okay, that's a fun feature, but when it's done poorly, it's very frustrating. Um, I remember, yeah, like, there were... and it kind of feels... It kind of feels like you're trying too hard or, or something. Right. Like it's like a it's like a fancy uh, transition in a PowerPoint presentation, where it's like right. okay that was neat, <laughs> but why? Right, and I remember some games where I just had a horrible time figuring out where the hot spot is on this weird cursor. Oh, yeah, and so you're always clicking, you know, ten pixels away from what you meant to click on. That was pretty bad. Um, I remember there were so many, like, these, I should compile a list someday of all the games that had a skeleton hand. Like, that was such a common one. So common <laughs> is the skeleton hand cursor. And that, was, that one wasn't bad because you could, the hotspot would always be, it was always a pointing skeleton hand. So, you know, you just, the pointer finger would be great. But sometimes you get one that's kind of round, like maybe it's a star and it's like, well, which point of this star is the hot spot? <laughs> yeah, yeah, is it in the center? Is it the top point or the side point? 
Or did you just leave it default and it's like the top left corner of the enclosing box? Right. So, yeah, that, that was a common one is the top right corner is of the enclosing box would be the default if you didn't do anything with it in code. So, therefore, the hotspot was actually not anywhere on the cursor. It was, it was not like, visually <laughs> indicated in any way. Right. Oh, it's, it, yeah, that, that's probably another reason that the... And, you know, the other reason is consoles kind of took over a lot, you know, a lot of RPG, th this is a, mostly an RPG thing, and a lot of that stuff moved to consoles, and they don't have cursors in co consoles. They just highlight the button that currently has the focus, because you don't have a mouse. Right. Those poor bastards. I know. We need to get some sort of fundraiser. To help console players get them a trackball or something yeah they need a desktop wallpaper they need some custom mouse cursors they need a keyboard that lights up in rainbow a clear case filled with lights for no reason <laughs> screensaver <laughs> after they need not just any screensaver they need the 1996 edition of after dark after dark oh yes <laughs> <laughs> the flying toaster screensaver. That was such a weird time in history. Like, you just sit there for half an hour playing with screensavers. Even By definition, it's something that that is trying to be entertaining while you are not using the computer. <laughs> while you are not present. It's like a movie that only unpauses when you leave the room. Man, when my dad showed me that you could click the preview button instead of waiting for 10 seconds for it to, like, you, you have to set the delay way down. So you have to wait for like a minute or whatever for the screensaver to come up to see what it looks like. And then my dad's like, hey, you can just click that preview button. It'll come up instantly. And that was, oh, mind blown. So much efficiency. So we've once again transitioned to this weird off topic thing that we did not plan to talk about, but since we're talking about screensavers, did you ever see Johnny Castaway? I don't think so. It is a screensaver of, of a classic um, shipwreck castaway on one of the little, you know, the little mound island with a single palm tree, that trope. <laughs> right, right, the Caribbean desert island or whatever. Right, that's that's smaller than like a living room. It's like, how does this still exist? Do they not get storms? Because one good hurricane or in this tides. place no longer. Yeah, <laughs> tides. I assume we're seeing it at high tide, and the island gets bigger. Because if it's the other way, you're doomed. Anyway, <laughs> John, Johnny Castaway was just it had like. A few dozen things that he could do. He'd shake the tree, and maybe the coconut would fall on his head, and then he'd like grumble. And he communicated like um, with thought bubbles with pictures in them. So he, you know, there, this no, was sure. early '90s. Yeah, this was early '90s, and he had all these sort of like little mm -hmm. grunt sounds that he would do. But he would do various things. He'd he'd be trying to build a raft, and you know, he was always working on this raft, and it never got anywhere. You know, there was just a raft on one side of the screen. He'd go over and bang on it once in a while, and then get hit in the head with a coconut, and then try and take a nap, or do some su sunbathing, or whatever. Because that's what a white man wants to do when he lives on a posted stamp island with one palm tree, is lay out deliberately in the sun <laughs> and, to and get no more of sunscreen. it. sunscreen. <laughs> right? Just, I could definitely use more UV rays hitting my white, white, my lily white skin. <laughs> well, it was a limited color palette. There's only so many shades you can do there. Right. Anyway, that was sort of a far, so needlessly elaborate screensaver that everybody had and everybody loved. It was wow. Very I, yeah, I don't, I don't think I... I may have seen it somewhere. I mean, I can conjure up an image of what you're talking about because it's so iconic, but I, I don't know that I ever actually saw it. Dear Diecast, 
I am growing increasingly frustrated by remasters slash ports slash remakes of older games. I'm a bit of a stickler for getting somewhat of an original experience, and a lot of these efforts tend to be compromised in some way. Dark Souls Remastered has changed lighting, Halo Anniversary has graphical glitches, Batman Return to Arkham has weird textures, the list goes on. And that's not even getting into the completely botched titles like War Warcraft 3 Reforged and Silent Hill HD. So how much does this bother you guys at all? What's your per personal purity threshold? I suppose a relevant question for Seamus would be, how much could a Mass Effect 1 remaster be changed until it's not worth the purchase anymore? Thanks, Caden, or Caden, if you'd prefer. Thank you for the question. Uh, yeah, so when I think about games that I would like a remaster for, it's usually, I'm usually thinking of 90s games that don't run properly today. It's like it has no concept of 16 by 9 resolution. It doesn't know any, you know, high resolution modes above 640 by 480. <laughs> you know, it's just, it can't handle modern input devices. The sound is super janky. And, you know, it has trouble saving files because it wants to save things, you know, the 1995 way or whatever. And, and that doesn't really work on modern machines. <laughs> so when I think of a remaster, I want to fix stuff like that. But I don't want, like, I don't want to play Dungeon Keeper at high res. I mean, like with high res textures and remade models and stuff. I don't want the game to change. I just want it to fit on my machine in a reasonable way and not have all these setup problems. Right. You want whatever version the guys on uh, Games Done Quick are using. Just so that it just runs. Right. It looks the same, but it just runs. Right. It looks the same because that's part of the ch charm of those early games. Um... You know, maybe the modern version doesn't bother to offer you, to ask you, hey, what graphic do you want to run in CGA or EGA or VGA <laughs> graphics? And it's, right. they would, like, skip that question in just, like, yeah, 256 color mode. Um, stuff like that. St games there where they used to have a custom cursor, but it no longer works on modern machines for, you know, reasons of sorcery. It would be nice if, yeah. you know, they just, you, you could, you, you, so, I mean, I remember playing some 90s games on a modern machine, and you could move the mouse and click on things, but the mouse pro pointer was invisible, which made it sort of this weird groping around, um, trying to use the menus, but you don't know where you're pointing. Uh, that was frustrating. So that's what I want from a remaster. Yeah. That happens in Windows sometimes, just, like, without playing an old game. Right? <laughs> can, we get a, can we get a remaster of Windows 10 that works on modern machines? Oh, man. Yes. Absolutely. Uh, the example that I don't see here that, that seems like it should be top of the list is the Final Fantasy VII thing, where it's just, like, completely right. changed... And also upgraded, and also oddly stuck to some parts of the story, and some parts of the gameplay right. while changing others completely. And it's like, what? Mm, what were you aiming for here? Right. Um, for me, the Mass Effect One is a really interesting question. And I've been pondering this for a long time because I know I'm going to get it. I mean, even if it, assuming it's not just horrific like it's trying to sell you stuff all the time or it doesn't run or it crashes or you know assuming nothing like that it, even if people say oh the, they replaced this classic voice actor and the new model doesn't look anything like the classic one okay that'll make me mad but i'll play through that and complain about it that's that's worth it to me so as long um, as it's not made by king and is a connect three now <laughs> But the, the thing with Mass Effect 1 
is it has very sparse environments like you know just a big a big empty planet you know fairly realistic planets in some cases where you know there's just nothing there it's just topography because right like the moon or something it's like what what were we expecting there's no there's nothing it's just what do you, nothing what do you yeah there's nothing what do you want a mcdonald's a starbucks what were you hoping for here? You want big hot alien babes? And... I mean, we've got those, but not here. Right, right. Well, what were you hoping to see? The cliffs of Dover? <laughs> what did you <laughs> want from the moon? So, but that leaves a lot of empty space, and to modern games try and avoid that because it is really boring, like to just cross a vast open distance. Right, like there's just a lot of space between here and there, and I can see my. If you, if you have to travel away, it's better to have the player like go through a canyon or something than to have them drive over an an open, just plain, right? Because that just gets so boring, and it feels like you're not going anywhere. Sure, or have, like have it be a travel sequence, and you have a conversation while you're doing it, or something. Right, right, but. I'm sure the Mass Effect 1 remaster is going to be like, oh, texture upgrade, you know, we'll have eight times the detail on textures now. But that will make the barrenness seem even worse. High res nothing. Right. High res nothing. If you've ever seen, like, you know, when somebody makes a subtracted cute, you know, baby's first level in a level editor, and they just make this you know, cuboid room that's the size of a stadium. And that's really frustrating. But you can, if you make the textures more detailed, it makes you feel even smaller. Like you're an ant, you know, crossing this vast, you know, you're an ant crossing a, you know, a theater or something just so long to get yeah, to the other yeah. side of the room. And so you could actually make the game way worse by just bumping up the texture resolution um, and not adding any more detail. So I don't know. It very much depends on the quality of the artists that work on it. It can be done very well or it can just be awful and make the game look worse than it did originally. Like Doom, the original Doom with like super 1024 textures does not look better than Doom. It just makes Doom look weird, <laughs> right? <laughs> it makes the... Yeah, yeah. There's a certain ratio of texture density to geometry density that yeah. if you get above it, it's just like, well, this is just a huge mural that someone painted. Like, why is there this giant flat space with all this texture detail? Right, yes. And it's... And your eye is drawn to detail. So you look towards this giant flat wall and you're like well my eye is drawn here but for no reason because there's nothing here <laughs> it's just a big <laughs> wall so yeah there's a lot to be said for focusing your attention on the places that do have detail around doors pickups bad guys so knowing what to remaster and how to improve it i mean frankly mass effect one could just you know, get rid of all those loading screens. Make the elevators wicked fast now. Like, as soon as the car... If it's an elevator with a... With a conversation, then as soon as the conversation's over, just poof, you arrive. And if there's no conversation, just get rid of the elevator. <laughs> or make it, you know, a bullet... Tra a vertical bullet train. I don't know. We'll I like see. It. I mean... Yeah, isn't that later this month, I think? Huh. That's it's it's weird. It was I remember like a few weeks ago somebody saying, Yeah, yeah, they're talking about it and now and they're gonna release in like you know, several weeks. And that was a while ago. So I feel like we're coming up on it. Man, if they can get it out, it's pretty dead right now. Right? Don't wait till November, idiots. <laughs> Dear Dyke Castles. Both of you have been working on ProcGen projects dealing with 3D spaces, so perhaps you will find this helpful. And that's not a question. There's not a question mark in this whole email. All right, well, here we go. 
My son and I have recently found a YouTuber he seems to have similar interests to yours, particularly in regard to game design. Sam Hogan has made a game with infinite levels, a Minecraft clone in 24 hours, and most recently, a Minecraft clone without the blocks, all using Procgen in Unity. His channel seems to be gaining traction, and since his interests align with yours, I thought that you should at least be aware of his existence. I hope that this message finds you both well. Regards, Zeta Kai. P.S. Full disclosure, I am probably not Sam Hogan, but I'm definitely not affiliated with him, other than usually liking his content, mostly. So, yes, this is not a question, but I put it in the show notes because I got this, in, I discovered Sam Hogan, I think it was on Wednesday. Like, it just sort of came up in my recommendations, and it was like, oh, Minecraft without, without blocks. And I was like, I've seen a few versions of that, but let's see what this guy's version looks like. And I like the speed. I mean, it's hard to talk about programming projects. Some people get way too far in the weeds. They figure, hey, I spent three days solving this problem. So therefore, that th my video showing off the project should proportionally you know, reflect that by just talking about this problem for ages. Right. And so you, yeah, you want right. to show your work. You want to show people all the hard work you did. Right. And that usually makes for a very slow video and you just jump forward and skip, 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 skip. Um, but if you do the other thing, you go too fast. It feels like you didn't go on a journey. It's just like you're waiting for this, for, Every, you know, the screenshots just get better better every 12 seconds. Um, so balancing the reveal of a project is hard. And Sam Hogan does a really good job at it. You know, feels, introduces a problem, solves it, shows his work, introduces it, but it's very snappy. He just keeps it moving. And I thought it was so weird. I watched exactly these videos that Zeta Kai talked about. And then I went over to my email and had this waiting in the mailbox. And I was like, that is spooky. Huh. And he hasn't put out very many videos. It's only like, what, 25 or so? Right. Right. That was just weird. Um, so, yeah. It, they were good videos. I'll link one of them in the show notes. But they're all pretty fun so far. I have only watched the, the most recent few. I haven't actually been spending a lot of time on YouTube. Good man. Working hard. Playing yep. in Blender. <laughs> I'm working hard on all the wrong things. All right. I think we'll do one more. Deer. Hey, that's the deer, the animal, not endearing deer. All right. We'll let it go. Deer Diecast. I finally got around to playing through Spec Ops The Line. Better late than never, I guess. Obviously, the game's main achievement is its complete subversion, dissection, criticism of the military bro-shooter genre of games. What other genre of games do you think could use a similarly scathing and ruthless deconstruction? Maybe JRPGs? Showing that sending a bunch of emotional teens to save the world isn't the best for their well-being? Thanks for reading and keep on casting die. Jolt. So... It's, I don't naturally think of this sort of deconstruction. As the person who wrote DM of the Rings and all those Let's Plays, I find it much more natural. Like, if I wanted to criticize superhero movies, I would not make The Boys, if anybody's seen that, where it gives it people superpower, but they're normal, everyday assholes and selfish jerks, and they cause pro you know... None of them have the right, personality right. They of have superheroes. Physical superpowers, but they don't have psychological superpowers like most superheroes do, where they can right. just be supernaturally altruistic. Right. Um, so that's a deconstruction, but like that wouldn't occur to me. I that would never occur to me to make that story. My thing would be making something like Galaxy Quest. It's a deconstruction of Trek, but it embraces it and loves Trek at the same time. And I can think... So my inclination is to make comedy versions of established genres. 
I would mm, love to. Right. These are these are ideas that I actually played around with a a Diablo style game that it seems like everybody is aware that it's a Diablo style game and people openly talk about the level like you being a certain level and getting better gear and monsters just breaking open like pinatas to drop guns or whatever. Right. <laughs> Go get that MacGuffin, hero. The other thing I'd really love to do, if I had to make a JRPG, I would want to make a game where you play as a main character that doesn't give a shit about the story. Um, like, sort of reflecting a lot of the tropes. Like the new, the new Doom game kind of thing. Right. Take that idea, but like... Um, you know, maybe he comes from a world that seems like ours. He's, you know, our surrogate. He's our POV character. And he has no time for this teenage bullshit. And he's like, just call in the National Guard. And they're like, National Guard? There's no such thing. That's us. And he's like, you, you guys are like 15. What are you doing? Why are we... There's guns in this universe. Why are we using swords? But then it comes to... They're going to be talking about all of this crazy you know the lore gets really crazy you know ghosts of right, robots right. that have been resurrected and traveled through time and then cloned and then those clones start a shadow war against you know copies themselves of themselves. from the future yeah. yes and our main character would not give a shit about any of that and he would just zone out or like walk away and then come, or he would spend the cutscene staring at this girl's tits the whole time. Like the 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 sound all gets very remote and muffled, and you can barely hear what anybody's saying. And then, right. and then he comes back into focus, and they're like, "All right, that does it. We're going to seek the shadow key inside of the Doom Fortress." And he's like, "I I don't know. Whatever. Let's let's go do it." <laughs> like does not care. And so you would make the. The, the end of these cutscenes where you hear what you're going to be doing as absolutely ludicrous as possible, filled with game jargon that makes no sense to the player. Um, you deliberately deliberately have a leveling system that is random and not. It, there just wouldn't be a real land, um, leveling system. It would just be you'd open it up and it would just be all of these insane nonsensical controls. You know, one sure, time you open it's procedurally it up, it's generated every time yes. to be different. <laughs> yes, and to make no damn sense. And your stats are always like, you know, they start off at five hundred thousand and go up by <laughs> orders of magnitude, <laughs> right? Every time, and so it's right. Like, and they're not round numbers; they're all like all the right. way down to the decimal place one. <laughs> right. Right. So that's something that I'd like to do. It's so like a JRPG for people that. We just want to play a brawler and and don't really care about JRPG type style stories and it just so leans like the, the Lego trope. movie in the but like and as a game. Yes, yeah, exactly like that. Like I would love to see. I'd love to write that. I feel like anything fun. if you're going to do a JRPG, any anything that's touching the uh, loving parody region would have to at least make a nod to nuclear power the the web comic oh that's true i haven't read that in i don't know when did it start maybe the mid aughts I haven't uh seen yeah it in ages. oh it ended years ago did it did it end or just oh, yeah. quit no they they wrapped it up oh i should check that out i i was reading order of the stick and i was really into it for the first you know five or six hundred strips and then i felt like the story wasn't going anywhere you know, I'm like, I'll wait until it's done and read the ending, because this is taking too long. If you're looking for a good webcomic that's had recently wrapped up, uh, Schlock Mercenaries is wrapped up recently. I, I heard about that. I read Girl Genius, but I never followed Schlock Mercenary, so... Yeah, it's good. I I really enjoyed it. I don't know if everyone would, but it's it's sci-fi. It's, it's medium-hard sci-fi, and uh, it's well-written. Anyway, so yeah, other genres could definitely do with the skewering. 
And hitting that tone is, I think, very powerful. Shaun of the Dead subverted um, zombie movies, the classic zombie movie. But it did so as a rom-com, and that was a weird blend, and it was very interesting, and did a lot of new things with the material while still being really funny. But you can do it badly, too. Um, the Last Action Hero is a great example of a failed attempt at that sort of loving um, parody or deconstruction. Did not work. Did not do well. That was an early 90s um, Schwarzenegger vehicle. I feel like anything by Peter Molyneux just kind of lands in that area. <laughs> In the, you were, I see what you were kind of going for, but you missed by so far. Well, it feels like it's making fun of the genres in which it's participating, right? Doesn't it? Um, give me an example. Well, like Fable, right? Like, there's all these genre savvy yeah. characters in Fable that are like making comments about you're doing this quest or whatever. And it's like, are you, it doesn't land well. It doesn't work. I mean, I'm not saying it's successful. But like it kind of feels like it was trying to be this, this aware, this self-aware thing, and it's like, well, are you? I didn't land it, but you tried something. <laughs> right, the tone of fables all over the place. If it's supposed to be a comedy, it needs way more jokes, and you should definitely have a protagonist that either participates in like. Your main character is always silent. They should either be able to speak so that they can comment on what's going to make snarky remarks, or they can just be sort of silent, but they're you can tell they're really annoyed. And Yeah, yeah. You want to yeah. be 20, 2004 Doom Guy or Guy Brush Threepwood. Don't right. miss the, one of those. Right, that's exactly it. Like, the character needs to roll his eye or her eyes, you know, when they're sent on a pointless quest or something. It just presents something really, really stupid and totally inco incoherent and then doesn't do any. It feels like it feels like a setup for a joke with no punchline. And so you just assume, oh, this is just stupid. <laughs> it's just. <laughs> There's no joke yeah, here. It's or, a comedy with no it's jokes. Like a, it's like a setup for like every every scene is a setup for a joke with a dead baby punchline. Yeah, that's the kind of comedy it is. It's just sort of like obnoxious and grating, and it doesn't have anything to say about the material. Like if Spec Ops the line you ended by winning as a real hero. And you got to go home to a parade, and you would be like, well, what the hell? What? <laughs> it's, what? It's like a parade, and but the streets are lined with all the caskets of the people that you killed, and it's just like, what is going on? <laughs> right? It's just stupid nonsense. So anyway, um, that's what I think about old screensavers. I, I, I don't know when, <laughs> I don't know when they lost die cast, the plot. everyone. I don't know when you let us off topic, Paul, but I forgive you. We're off the rails this week. Speaking of that, thank you for um, reminding me that the Epic Store exists. I just, while we were talking, saw that Railway Empire came on. I've been like, had that in my Steam wish list for ages. And I was always like, you really? know, that sounds like fun, but it's $40. I, I, I don't want it for $40. I'll wait till it goes on sale. And it's been one of those stubborn games that just doesn't want to come down to where I was interested. And now I got it for free. So thanks for that. Now, I okay, it's nice that I own it, but I probably won't remember to launch the Epic Game Store and install the game and play it. But maybe I'll see it on Steam, <laughs> and then I will remember that I own it on the Epic Store, and then I'll be willing to go over there and install it and play it. We'll see. Anyway. Well, thanks, everyone. That is a great show. Remember, if you have a question for the DieCast, the DieCast is SeamusYoung.com. No, it's, die, it's DieCast. It, it's on the screen. It's in the description. Write an email. It's in the header image. Goodbye. Say goodbye. 
Goodbye. That was simultaneously terrible and yet still the best outro we've ever done. Uh, we're all ruined. <laughs>